Can everyone see the screen? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. For those that don't know, this is Michelle Gibson, a good friend of ours. She's a real historian as compared to those who study academia and only study academia in order to depend upon their research, the information, I should say. So this is what she says. I am seeing that there was an ancient advanced global civilization called the Moorish Empire. Instead of the historical narrative we have been taught about who built the world's infrastructure, perhaps with different empires within an empire, Washington, Phoenician, Tartarian, Ottoman, but all but one unified worldwide civilization with its roots in ancient Mu or Lemuria in Atlantis. The Washington Moors are an ancient people of North America living in the present day, and the recently descended, deceased Washington Empress Verdiasi was presented a charter by the United Nations in 1993 recognizing the Washington as the oldest indigenous civilization on Earth. Based on my research, I take very seriously the belief among many researchers that there was a relatively recent worldwide mud flood liquidation event that wiped out this advanced civilization and there, and then there was a subsequent historical reset of the timeline, of the timeline. And she goes on to say, by those responsible for the cataclysm, I do not believe the mud flood resulted from natural causes. Who have done their research on the mud flood in the Tartarian Moorish Empire? We went over last week that Tartarian is actually barbarian or barbarian or Berber or Babur, Babur, however you want to pronounce it. It shows the historical narrative around the world. Anyone done their research on mud flood? And if so, what did you find out through your research? No one? All right. If not, I suggest that you go and do your research on the mud flood and the Tartarian Empire, which is the Moorish Empire. And this has been verified by William Lee through his various books that he has written within the last four years. Ali, excuse me, Ali. Yes. I didn't need yes. to cut you. I'm not trying to cut you with it. But I just got through uh, reading the book on the Tartarian, One World Tartarian uh, Empire. Brother, yeah, it, is, it, it is awesome. Right. Super awesome, brother. Super yeah, awesome. He, he used um, some of my information from out my book, The First World Order. Yeah, it is The First World Order. The First World Order, The One World Tartarian uh, Empire, and the... Uh, the uh, part one and part uh, part one and part two of the Moorish uh, Moorish uh, uh, dealing with the Moors as well about mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lee, a, a man named Lee. And the thing about it, most of these authors, uh, all of them authors are Europeans, right? Out beyond Europeans, exactly. You know that's that's what that was so. Well, say I found so fascinating about it. Yeah. But I urge all all you brothers and sisters in this class, 
Get those books, brothers and sisters. Get those books. Okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm move myself out so you can. Okay. All right. So, how did the mud flood happen? Well, they keep linking all of the pre moderate inventions to Nikola Tesla, free energy, and so forth and so on. However, Nikola Tesla came about as a middle person of technology in which that existed way before he got his hands on it, but before he knew anything about free energy. There is a ledge earthquake machine in which that Nikola Tesla has the original patterns for, in which that this earthquake machine, I postulate that it was utilized in order to create what we call now the mud flood and the so-called global reset. And I hate to use the word global, but this is what they have used. I just simply say throughout the world. Get the book, When the World Was Black, The Untold History of the World's First Civilizations, Part 1, Prehistoric Culture. This is by Supreme Understanding. Definitely get this book because before six to 8,000 years ago, there were no Europeans on the planet Earth, period. There were no... Oriental. I already got those books, Arlene. I already got good. them. <laughs> good, good, good. Excellent. And see, for those that didn't get a chance to say anything, hopefully you have these books in your library. Forbidden Archaeology, you must have this in your library. The Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Friedmore, Richard L. Thompson. When they speak about 2.8 billion years old spheres, in which that was created by intelligent beings. Get this book, When Nature, Nations Gather, by Sultan Latif. I didn't get a chance to meet him. I got a chance to meet his wife, um, speak with her on numerous occasions. And she sent me my first copy of this book. He speaks about the pre-Cambrian spheres dating back to 2.8 billion years ago, now called clerk drop spheres. Most of you have heard this information, but I'm putting this in context for those who are new in class. Scientific American Magazine dates back June 5th, 1852. There was a blast that was carried out in Meeting Hill, Rock, in Dorchester, Massachusetts. That's right outside of Boston, in which that the United States Geological Survey put in stone and found this vase or this bell-shaped vase or vessel inside of the rock, put in stone, in which they dated back 600 million years ago. It was four inches high with exquisite carving. Then we have another strange artifact in which that this is 500 million-year-old hammer embedded inside a rock that formed over 400 million years ago. This was released in June 1936. Max Han and his wife Emma was on a walk near a waterfall in London, Texas. And embedded inside of this rock was this ancient man-made hammer. Get 
Then we have in Antelope Springs, Utah, prints of a man wearing shoes in which that the left foot trotted down on a troglobite, which dates back to 260 to 600 million years ago. So we're talking about an estimate of about 440 million years ago. Now, this only makes sense in context when you go and read When Nations Gather or when you read Forbidden Archaeology. Forbidden Archaeology tells you about this blast that was carried out right here in the so-called Americas in Dorchester, Massachusetts, misnomer, 600 million years ago. So here it is, we're finding hammers 500 million years ago in America, London, Texas. We're finding footprint 450 million years ago in Antelope Spring, Utah. We're finding man-made artifacts found in 300 million year old sandstone. In Texas, or this is a mystery of display at the Mount Blanco Fossil Museum in Cosbyton, Texas, where appeared to be evidence of a man-made artifact which was embedded in sandstone reported to be 300 million years old. The site of the discovery was in the tri-state area of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. Here we have a 300 million year old bell that was found by a 10 year old boy in 1944. His name is Newton Anderson. And it dropped a piece of coal, a lump of coal in his basement, and it broke in half. And this is what was discovered an alloy bell with a iron clapper and structured handle. And this was an unusual mix of metals, copper, zinc, tin, arsenic, iodine, and selenium. Of course, you've seen things made out of copper, zinc, tin, but not arsenic, iodine, and selenium? This is a 290 million year old human footprint, which baffles the experts. Of course it does, because they tell you that humans didn't get on planet Earth until 300,000 years ago. But obviously, that's false, because nearly 299 million years ago, or 300 million years ago, they say there was no humans, but obviously this footprint proves differently. Here's another shoe print that was discovered in 1927, preserving triastic limestone dating back to 225 million years ago. Now, everything that I just talked about is before the continental drift, before, um, before the continents drifted apart. This is when we, was taught, when we were in school, Pangea. Now, I was taught about Pangea in history class or social studies class. Now you have people who try to play as if they never get taught that information at all in, in class or in school. When it's obvious that you can link up North America, South America, Central America, the adjoining islands, and places right over top, of Africa. Or on the western coast of Africa. In 1997, there was a case of a 200 million year old shoe print discovered in Raid um, Mountain in China. So, a print that was about 10 feet. 
I mean, excuse me, 10 inches. In other words, a size 10 shoe. Watch the Tardis. It's in Watch the In St. Louis, Missouri, footprint in premium rock, 200 million years old. In Vera, Kentucky, footprint in Pennsylvania rock, 200 million years old. Persian County, Nevada, footprint showing evidence of a well-cut and double-stitched leather sole in, in triastic limestone dating back to 160 to 195 million years old. Glen Rose, Texas, footprint in Cretaceous rock dating to 70 million years old. Fisher Canyon, Nevada, a footprint with clear trace of strong thread in a coal seam dating back to 12 million year old, years old. Now, all of this is before they claim that humans came upon planet Earth. This is another book you need to get. The Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Cremo and Richard L. Thompson, the condensed edition of Forbidden Archaeology. So in the book it says humans have been walking the earth for millions, for hundreds of millions of years. I'm going to say that again. Humans have been walking the earth for hundreds of millions of years. And it states over the past 200 years, the scientific establishment has selectively ignored, suppressed, and forgotten some remarkable artifacts and bones that contradict the dominant view of human origin and iniquity. Evolutionary prejudices have served as a sort of informational filtering or disinformation filtering system that has left us with a radically incomplete set of facts for building our ideas about human origin. The hidden history of the human race is a call for change in today's arbitrarily rigid mindset, deploying an unexpected great number of convincing facts, deeply illuminating with critical analysis. Readers will find themselves compelled to rethink our understanding of human origin, identity, and destiny. Essentially, everything which I just went over is in the book. Thus, I'm not talking out of my ass. I am linking the information that we just dropped of these hundreds of millions of years in this book called The Hidden History of the Human Race, in which that paleontologists do not want to battle against. Archaeologists do not want to battle against, and anthropologists do not want to battle against. Neither three want to battle against this information, so they simply ignore the information, but it can't be hidden any longer. All right. Now we have Gods and Spacemen in the Ancient West by W. Raymond Drake. And he states specifically that the Pygmies inhabited Earth for 30 million years. All right. Now understand that when they talk about the Pygmies, they're just not talking about the present day Pygmies, but they're also talking about the Bushmen, the Hottentots. There was short as well. They was four to five feet tall as well at one time. But the pygmy spread it throughout the world. Here's a 28 million year old human skeleton in the basement at the British Museum. 
And this was from the Caribbean island of Guadalupe. My wife and I went to the British Museum, and we asked about going down into the basement in order to see these particular relics as well as much more. The head curator of the museum was not there that day, and the curator that we did speak to, he said we could come back in order to set that up. However, what he did tell us was that what we seen up top was only 20%. The other 80% of our history and information is in the basement of the British Museum. There's a book called Signs and Symbols of Primordial Man, written by Albert Churchward, and he says the pygmies are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. Well, they go back to at least 30 million years. That means who was their forefathers and foremothers? That was going back hundreds of millions of years, billions of years. It says the now Negroes was probably one of the first of the ant root race, the race that was the first and oldest race of men after the pygmies. Here's another book called The Hidden Life in Freemasonry by C.W. Ledbetter. He says that pygmy race is a relic of the old Lemurians and represents them more purely than any other people. The Lemurians were at one time a gigantic people, but in the process of dying out, they diminished in size. The African Bushmen was also a remnant of the same race. So the African Bushmen and the Pygmies are the same people. And they have linked that the African Bushmen, known as the Hantas, known as the San people or Kohi San people, are the oldest, have the oldest diverse genetics in the world. But they was also referred to as the pygmies. They're the remnants of the same race, but it's said to have very mixed blood. And the same thing is true of those who are called the aborigines or Australian aboriginals. Except that in the case there is a very admixture, a light admixture mixture of Aryan blood. And at one time, the pygmies were spread over a great deal more of Africa than at present. And some of them were the first people to enter Egypt. This is where you get best from, B-E-S, which is the form of Ptah, the Tarhites. They are called the Tarhites. They are called the Twa people. They are known as the indigenous people of Africa and of the world because they're going into, well, it goes the origin and evolution of primitive man. It says from here, these little men spread it all over the world, north, east, south, and west. They brought the good news. North, east, west, and south, you get the word news, the acronym for news, until not only Africa, but Europe, Asia, North and South America, and Ocean was populated by them. It was the first, the little red men of the earth. From the pygmies, evolution continued progressively into the following order. Allegedly, you have the Bushmen. At least this is what he states. But we know now that the Bushmen has the most diverse and has allegedly the oldest DNA, and from them came forth the Mongolians or Mongoloids or the Asian or what is known as the Orientals, which they don't like the term Oriental, but Asians, as well as also came through India, the Europeans. You have the Masaba Negro, the Nihilic Negro, the Maasai, the, Mongo the Mongoloids, and then the so-called Aryanists. So the Aryans or the Europeans were the last people on planet Earth to develop. And the development dates back no further than six to 8,000 years ago. 
which is the same time frame in which that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stated within his message to the black man that they only been on planet Earth 6,000 years. The European, their own scientists are verifying this information today. Then get the book, Wonderful Ethiopians of the Ancient Kushite Empire by Drusilla Dungy Houston. This is what she says. The name Kush was given to four great areas, Media, Persia, Susiani, and Area and of the whole territory between the Indus and Tigris, which is the rivers in India in prehistoric time. In Africa, the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, the, Libyan, the Libyans, and Canaanites and Phoenicians were all descendants of Ham. They were a black and dark race and the pioneers of our civilization. They were emphatically the monument builders on the plains of Shinar, and the valley of now from Monroe or Moreau to Memphis. In southern Arabia, they erected wonderful edifices. They were responsible for the monuments that dot southern Siberia and in America all along the valley of the Mississippi down to Mexico and in Peru. Their images and monuments stand a voiceless witness. This was the ancient Kushite empire of Ethiopia that covered three worlds. So it covered North, South America, it covered Asia, and it covered Africa. Asia includes Europe. This was the ancient Kushite empire of Ethiopia that covered three worlds. Some of our later later books recognize the, the indisputable influence in primitive culture. Speak of them as a brunette brown race representing a mysterious heliotic culture. In other words, they were sun worshippers. And everything is based on the science of the sun. In other words, Ra. So, how do we know that this is true? Well, y'all seen the video, at least you should have seen the video, of when we was talking to the archaeologist who was our tour guide down in Mexico. His name was Jesus, or Jesus. And he told us specifically that the pyramids in the Americas was not built by the Mayans. They was built by the Omex, and the Omex are the Egyptian Kushite people, or the Kushitic Egyptian people. This is what he told us. So they showed that the Egyptians traveled the world. They was already here in the Americas. This is why you have 18 temples in the Grand Canyon from the ancient Egyptians and have found relics throughout the Americas in Pacific North America in which that shows that the Egyptians were here. The Egyptians and Kushites, same people during that time period. They was not different people. So Egypt was here. We have Egypt of the north, Egypt of the south, North America, South America. This was Egypt. This is why you find pyramids from South America, Central America, into North America. This is why you find mounds. Specifically here in North America. At one time, there was over 200,000 mounds. Now it's down because the infrastructure eradication is down to now about 20,000 
mounds that have been that is still here. Now, between 1894 to 1921, mineralogist, archaeologist William Nevin or Neven discovered ancient cities in Mexico that dated at the beginning of the Pleistocene era, which was 2.5 million years ago. Some cities were built further into the Teteri era beneath volcanic ashes. Nevin rediscovered over 2,600 stone tablets as well as moderate human skulls that show Negroid genetic markers 2.5 million years ago in ancient cities in Mexico. So that means that even when the Omex came, they came, meaning that they came to a place that was already far advanced. See, what people have not realized is that America is the Olympian. See, the continental drift did not come by way of just haphazardly of an earthquake, in which that is mentioned within chapter 47 of the Holy Quran, circle 7, divinely prepared by Prophet Nobudra Ali. No, I believe that the gods existed here in the Western Hemisphere, and the experiments in which that took place was in the Eastern Hemisphere. And the God separated the continents. And the gods dwelled here in North, Central, South, and the adjoining islands called America or Americana, now called the Caribbean or Caribbean, West Indian or West Indian um, Islands or West Indian Islands. This is the homeland of the gods. This is why everybody looks to us in the world. Everything we do, they copy. We are the originators of all of the music in which that is heard around the world, especially the moderate music. We invented the John Standard, invented the refrigerator, and the refrigerator is in everybody's home around the world, nearly. That was here in America. Granville T. Woods created the traffic light. That is in every country, nearly around the world. Everything that we do here becomes the fad or becomes the thing to the rest of the world. Our fashion, our style of dress, our music, our sport capabilities. Right. Our sport capabilities. Everything. So, we've been here for a long, long time. We just did not come here on slave ships 400 years ago. When he just finished saying that 2.5 million years ago, these skulls show markings of Negroid genetic markers. In 1887, Florentine Amigno, 
discovered apparently man-made heaps, primitive flint tool, carved bones, and a moderate-looking human spinal bone in the Pleistocene strata dating back to three to five million years old in Monta Hermosa, Argentina, which is South American. He also made similar finds in Mesocene strata in Argentina, excuse me, in Argentina, five to 25 million years old. So we're talking about three to five million years old, then five to 25 million years old. We're talking about 2.5 million years. We just keep going on and on and on. And notice that we went all the way to 2.5, 2.8 billion years ago, down now to 2.5 million years ago. 600 million years ago from, we was in the Americas at Dorchester, Massachusetts, and here we are 2.5 million years ago, we're in Mexico. This is United States Geological Surveyor. Her name is Virginia Stein McIntyre. In 1969, she did a dig in Mexico in which that she says that, she, that at least 250,000 to 350,000 years based on human artifacts and stone tools tested at the um, Hayolik um, Laco um, site near the city of Pablo. Shortly after dating of the site was made public, the head of the Mexican Archaeological Department in the Mexico, uh, Mexican government became very upset and wanted her to take a zero or two off of the dates, to make it 25,000 to 35,000. Matt, no. Really, they wanted to take two zeros off, not just one. They wanted to make it 2,500 to 3,500. Because they always wanted to keep everything within the realm of 6,000 years. It wasn't until recently that they started going outside 6,000 years. Because that would give them the ability in order to stay within their timeline because they're only 6,000 years old. So everything has to be within that 6,000 year span. The Bible, 6,000 years, because the day unto the Lord is a thousand years. And a thousand times there was six days. So on the seventh day he fasted or he, uh, he rested as they say. So six times 1,000 is 6,000 years. And for the other 1,000 years, he rested. Get this book, Susu Economics, The History in African Trade, Commerce, Money, and Wealth. It says, this is written by Paul Alfred Barton, alay salam upon him. He says, the mound builders, we are the mound builders, if you did not know. We are the pyramid builders. They was dark-skinned, woolly-haired blacks who were indigenous, native to North America and kin to the Omex of South America. The Omex and Washita, black Californians, Yamasee, Califunami, or Califunami, and other pre-Columbian blacks of the Americas was part of a prehistoric trade network that began in Africa, allegedly, and spread it worldwide over 100,000 years ago and at various periods afterwards. Get this book, The Red, Brown, and Black Men of America and Australia and Their White Supplanters by G.T. Batani. Okay? Get this book, A Pictorial History of America, Northern and Southern Portions of the New World, written by K.G. Goodrich. So he's showing a, a pictorial. In other words, 
drawn pictures of how the Americans look. And I promise you, they don't look mongoloid. Who lived in America 50,000 years ago? Well, we know who lived in America 600 million years ago. We know who lived in America 400 million to 200 million years ago. We know who lived in America 300 to 100,000 years ago. So who lived in America 50,000 years ago? Well, sculpture tablets used by James Church Ward, who's the brother to Albert Church Ward, who I spoke of earlier. Sculpture tablets recently discovered in Mexico, Mexico, see, present startling evidence of prehistoric civilization in the American continent founded by colonizers from the land, from the lost motherland of Mu in the Pacific Ocean. If you don't know, Mu is Maui today, which is the capital of Hawaii, and it's Maui, as they call it, actually is Mu, in which that those various land masses at one time were all together. Tonga, Easter Island, Hawaii, Samoan Islands, all of that at one time was an island, and it was called Lemuria or Mu. Volcanic activity, or what is known as earthquake activity, took place and broke those land masses apart. The survivors came into the Americas. All right, this is by Chief Torriano Obashango L, and this is what he says. The Achitanis Aboriginals is misnomer today as Negro, Black, Colored, Afro-American, and African-American, but lawfully known as Moor, Moors, have been in America since the immemorial as the first people. Dr. Theodore White, author of Introduction to Anthropology, published in 1863 on page 195, states that a man by the name of Dr. Loon infers that the population of the Americas is more ancient than that of the old world. Well, we can't verify as if it's more ancient, but it's right up there because we're talking about at least 600 million years old. Dr. Watts further documents that during excavation for gas works in New Orleans, a human skeleton was found at a depth of 16 feet under the Cypress forests, and the age of the skeleton was calculated at approximately 57,000 year old during the period of discovery. So these are the Paleo-Americans, or rather the ancient Americans. This is what the emperors refer to as the ancient ones. Now, this is from, this is Tyro Cannon, who is a geneticist, and he did my gen genetics, and this is what he says. New evidence put man in North America 50,000 years ago. And that's the least. But it, act, but it answers the questions of who lived in America 50,000 years ago by James Churchward, Colonel James Churchward. And we find out. Radiocarbon tests of carbonized plants remains with artifacts were on Earth last May along the Savannah River in Allendale County by University of South Carolina archaeologist 
Dr. Albert Goodyear indicates that the sediments containing these artifacts are at least 50,000 year old, meaning that these humans inhabited North America long before the last ice age and long before slavery, long before the so-called transatlantic slave trade. Copper is the oldest radiocarbon dated site in North America. Goodyear say, however, other earlier sites or early sites in Brazil and Chile, as well as sites in Oklahoma, also suggest that humans were in the Western Hemisphere as early as 30,000 years to perhaps 60,000 years ago. Three radiocarbon dates were obtained from deep in the terrace of Tapu with two dates of 50,300 and 51,700 on burnt plant remains. One moderate date related to an intrusion. Stafford say, these two 50,000 dates indicate that there was at least 50,300 years. The absolute age is not known. The dates could actually be older, good years say. 50,000 seems to be a minimal age since there may be little detectable evidence or activity left. The top of excavation site is in the central Savannah River Valley of Allendale County, South Carolina. This is in South Carolina. A popular assumption in some scientific circles is an atomically modern human evolved in Africa between 60,000 to 80,000 years ago. Evidence of a uh, of an atomically modern human migration out of the African continent has been documented in Australia in Central Asia at 50,000 years All right, 50,000 years, and in Europe, 40,000 years. The fact that amatomically modern humans were also in North America at and near the same time highlights the fallacy of the OOA concept or the AOO concept. And this is them saying that Negroes just came out of Africa. Here's a picture of Dr. Albert Goodyear, and this is what he says. Humans lived along the east bank of the Savannah River 50,000 years ago. The 51,700 years old North American site found in Allendale County, South Carolina, by the Savannah River is at least 30 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. The evidence for the ancient African migration came in multiple forms, skulls and skeletons, footprints in lava campsite, genetic M174, which is a haplo, which are haplo groups, the mother uh, mitochondrial haplo group, and D haplo group, linguistics, painting, carving, architecture, Egyptian writing. All of Egyptians was writing here in the Americas. Metro nature, hieroglyphics, 51,700 years ago. So this is much older than what they have told us about the, about the writing system when he just confirmed it. And that this was done here in the Americas. in South Carolina. This data exposed the false premise that the first Americans came from Asia once and for all. It sure does, because it showed that we was here 51,700 years, which is 40,000 years, more than 40,000 years before the Orientals came upon the planet or came here to the Americas. Actually, more than 45,000 years ago.
They was referred to as the pre covid people. The pre covid culture is generally believed to be the first Americans, as in the first Amer humans to populate the Americas. They arrived perhaps as early as 50,000 years ago. They arrived perhaps as early as 50,000 years ago, according to carbon dating at some sites like the Topper site in South Carolina. They were hunter-gatherers with tools distinct from the COVID. Now, so these were pre-COVID cultures. And they came as early as she says, 50,000 years ago. This is Suzanne Flynn. Now, she's using Dr. Albert Goodyear's information. And what does he say? He says, the evidence for the ancient African migrations. So you, you have so-called Africans, as they say, coming from out of Africa 50,000 years ago. And that is an assumption because they want to keep Africa as a, as a central theme of that everyone came from out of Africa. Some of the haplogroups information, blood testing information nowadays does not verify that. In fact, it disproves it. But I won't get into that information, at least not now. So the people that she talking about that was the first people to enter the Americas, but she said the pre-COVID culture is generally believed to be the first Americans, as in the first humans who populate the Americans. And who were they? Well, according once again to Dr. Goodyear, they were the ancient African migration. It was from an ancient African migration. And we just happened to end up in South Carolina. Which at one time was a heavy populated slave state. Get these two books, Ancient Encounters, The Kennewick Man and the First American by James C. Chatter. Get the other book, Covis, On the Edge of a New Understanding by Smallwood and Jennings. Now, within your DNA, you can go to sites such as GEDmatch, upload your information once you do it at 23andMe or Ancestry.com. You can upload your information there at JEDmatch, J-E-D-M-A-T-C-H, JEDmatch, and you will see that they tell you that you are indigenous, that you are the first beings or the first Americans to come into, or the first Africans, as they claim, to come into the Americas. And we know there was various impacts. That's fine. But we also know that there was indigenous people that was here prior to the continental drift, as we already proven. It. it was 400 million years prior to the continental drift. But here's my jet match. If you come down, MDLP K11. Moderate admixture of proportions. You come down to F999919, and you see what? Ovis, Montana. Covis, Montana. This correlates to this book here. This also correlates to the pre Covis culture. But they just chalked it up because they don't want to go beyond 12,500 years ago as to the COVID, COVID, all right? And as you see here, look at the dates, or look at 12,500,000 years. 
and they say Covis Montana. That's Montana. This is when we look at Covis, they talk about in Montana. And look at the yellow line, I mean the orange lines. That is rather thick. That's rather thick. When you're talking about the 22 chromosomes on which that all these yellow lines, orange lines, make up. This shows that I have ancestry that dates back over 12,500 years ago easily and is very thick throughout the lineage. So now we know that so-called Africans, if that's what we want to call them, they call them the sub-Saharan Africans, which all these are misnomers, was here at least 12,500 years ago. That would still be 6,000 years before the Europeans came upon planet Earth and the Orientals. He was already in the Americas. There were no so-called Indians, as we now refer to them as, which is nothing more than a admixture of the Mongoloids and Negroes who was here. Then you have Kennewick Man, F999970, Kennewick, United States, dates back to 8,300 years ago. And you see the orange lines there. And they are within nearly all 22 chromosomes, but ne not nearly as thick as the Covis Montana. So the Kennewick Man is more so for those who had ancestry later on from the Mongoloids, who are known as the Asians. While the Covis Montana DNA, and here are the chromosomes, verifies that not only will we prior to the Kennewick man and their ancestors, so the Kennewick man and the first Americans, and the first Americans. That means that the Kennewick man was not the first American. They came later on, but who do you see on the cover of the book in the background? On the cover of the book in the background is us. Notice that. This is by James C. Chatter. That is a so-called Negro. So he knows who the Kennewick and the first Americans are. He didn't put long-haired, mongoloid, Indian on the cover. He put you on the cover. Because this is the new information that is breaking records right now. So this verifies it. The fact that I have Lumbee, Puerto Rican, which is Well, you call the Puerto Ricans Tiano, Arawak. Then you have the Miwok and Mexican. All of these are Native American derivatives of the original beings or people who was here, except they had admixtures. Get this book, We Are Not Just Africans, The Black Native Americans by Dr. Clyde Winters. Several types of blacks into the Americas, including the Koei sign, who are the Hottentots, who are known as the Sun people, who was known as the Bushmen, the South African Bushmen. All right? Later on, the Bantu people. Then you have Anu, which are the Bantu, and the, Negri the Negrito type, and the Proto- Saharian variety of blacks. Up until recently, it was believed that the first human crossed the Bering Strait 12,000 BP to enter the North American continent, the North American continent. The view was never accepted by physical 
anthropologists who have found skull, skeleton remains further south in South America, which is proven by the fact of these heads here. Lucia, all right, in particular. So not only were Naia, the first European, as you see here, and Lucia, the first South American, and this is Richard Nave at the University of Manchester, England, stated that the face of the first Americans is a Negroid face, a Negroid face. He says it is not mongoloid. She was African and Aboriginal, Australian, from the Pacific Islands. Wow. This is what he says. And this is a forensic expert. This is what it says, the first Americans. The Brazilian find, the Brazilian, because this is from Brazil, this find is from Brazil. So that means that the majority of the people in Brazil who believe that they came on slave ships, just like we was taught that shit here in North America, did not come on slave ships. They are the aboriginal indigenous people of South America. The Brazilian find shows that the New World was discovered tens of thousands of years earlier than previously believed, certainly well before the time of the American Indian. You hear that? Well before the American Indian. Prehistoric skulls was found buried in layers of soil in Brazilian caves. They are the oldest skulls of the Americas. Lucia, as you see here to the right, I mean to the left, excuse me, they are the oldest skulls found in America. Lucia belongs to a race found historically along the rim of the Indian Ocean in the islands of the South Asia and in East Africa and in Australia and Malaysia, BBC, which is the British Broadcasting Company. That, to me, is a Negroid face. It has all the features that would associate with a Negroid face. The proportions of the face doesn't say anything about it being mongoloid. This is Richard Nave, the British forensic scientist from Manchester or the University of Manchester in England. This is what he said. He said that. And it doesn't look mongoloid to me either, does it? Does it look mongoloid to you? He said this is a Negroid face. The first reaction was not to believe in it, but as the results repeated, repeated, repeated so many times, and the results is the exact, exactly the same thing, the skulls are very similar to the Australian Aborigines and the Africans, and no similarities at all with Mongoloids in Asia. So the Mongoloids are not the indigenous people of the Americas. They Johnny come lately, and then you have more Johnny come latelys who are the five dollar Indians who pay their way into the goddamn Mongoloid tribes. When the indigenous people are not even on the reservations, because it was too many of us, there was millions of us. They couldn't put us on the reservation, so what they had to do was give us false information, denationalize us. and made us believe that we just came from Africa 400 years ago. The first Americans were Africans. This is written by Dr. Imhotep, Ph.D. Brother um, Fahim, I know that you got um, Brother David Imhotep's book, The First Africans Were, um, The First Americans Was African, Documented Evidence. What do you think about it? All right, he might have got off or got cut off somehow. Anyone else has this book? Anyone else read this book? The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence, Dr. Imhotep, PhD. I mean, as long as you've been in this class, some of y'all need to have your library up for real because this is ridiculous if you don't have these books. 
because I'm not hearing y'all say that y'all have these books, and this is ridiculous. You I should have these books. Winners, but the, we're not just uh, we're not just Africans. Okay, good, uh, good, one. good, 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 good. All right. So you need to get this book in his revised edition. All right. His in his revised edition, he put more of my information into his book. And the late salam upon um, Dr. Imhotep, he passed um, recently too, if I'm not mistaken. So here's an article. It says Africans may have been the original Americans. Africans may have been the original Americans. So that means that we would no longer be Africans, we would be the original Americans, just like the title states. So not only would we be the first Americans, we'd be the original Americans. These are the titles that you need to start taking. The first Americans and the original Americans. Now you have Indians trying to claim that they're the first Americans. They're not. And this is just the truth of the matter. We're brothers and sisters, yes, but tell the goddamn truth. Why did I have to go and research all this information to come to the conclusion that we was here first? Right. This information should have been out when I was a child, not having to find in my 30s, 40s, and 50s. Anthropology uh, will reveal a lot of truth, too. Yeah. No doubt about it. I mean, Once everybody again, believed that um, asking not to do, what's his name, uh, uh, Melville Hertzovich, you know, anthropologists like that, you know, people believe him. It's like, how come you can't believe your own brother, you know? Yeah, especially when your own brother got got the facts in the books to state differently. It'd be different if I didn't have any proof. But very few people come with this much information and this much proof to verify our existence here in the so-called new world, which actually is the old world which is where the gods dwell, Olympia. This actually was called the land of the gods. You don't believe me? Get the book written by Mark Amaru Pinkham, The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom. In that book, he says that America was known as the land of the gods. This is where the gods dwell. This was the land, this was the Olympia. This was with Zeus, which is quasi quoto the plume serpent. Wasn't it the land of the serpents? This is known as the land of the serpents, the land of the gods. The Nagas, the land of the Nagas, the niggas. Uh, you know, I look at um, hills different now. You know, I see mounds everywhere, you know, ever since I've been, you know, ever since I got into Washington. You know, you see the steps. Uh, going up the hill, it's like that ain't nothing but a design from the um, the step pyramid, you know, in the mounds or whatever. Exactly. So the Paleo American, a primer on ancient American history, get this book by Dr. Nihan Ali. So, once again, I go to geneticist Tyrone Cannon. This is what he wrote about me. I saw really new to Clark L. Bay. He says, in other words, no, I say, in other words, I am a so-called Paleo-American, preferably ancient American, because this is what he said. 
when he did my DNA. He says, Aboriginal American ancestry, misnomer Sub-Saharan African, represented at approximately 87% of Osaru Ali Nupak El Bay's genome reflects the original group that populated the Americas. 87%. Outstanding. So they misnomer it Sub-Saharan African. So when you see E1B1A, they will label that Sub-Saharan African when that is the original groups. That is from the original groups that populated the Americas. Because we know that E haplo group is from D haplo group. And if you notice, what did, look what Dr. Albert Goodyear says. He says, ancient African migration, genetic M174, which is the mitochondrial DNA, or what is known as the M mitochondrial and D, haplo groups. So from the D haplo groups, you get E haplo group. So he was saying that E1B1A just did not necessarily come from Africa because it was Africans, as they claimed, that was already here. And the mutation of E came from D. And so, therefore, Aboriginal African ancestry misnomer, excuse me, Aboriginal American ancestry misnomer, Sub-Saharan African, represented at approximately 87% of Osario Alim Nutupac El Bay's genome, reflects the original groups that populated the Americans. So we know who was here 600 million years ago down to 50,000 years ago. And all those times in between that I went over. So now from 50,000 years ago to this time period, we can also go into how the Omex are called the first American civilization and the oldest Western civilization. Because the Omex are a branch of those Aboriginal ancestry in which that I am connected to and you are connected to. And so this is why we find out that they were called the Kushite or Egyptians. The Omex was called the Kushite or Egyptians. They referred to themselves as the She people. S-H-I or X-I. This is where you get the name Washita from, Washita. In the center of Wa and Ta, you have the word she. So not only do we tie ourselves back to 5,000 years ago with the Omex, but the ancestry dating back to 50,000 years ago of the Negroid ancestry, in which that's been verified by Dr. Albert Goodyear, and further back. Here, Egypt was here in um, the Americas. The Egyptian came to the Grand Canyon around 1700 B.C. That is proven by the fact that there are 18 temples in the Grand Canyon Below is an article from Arizona Gazette, Friday, March 12, 1909, which is also in a book called Archaeological Cover-Ups by David Hatcher Childress. He states, perhaps the most amazing suppression of all is the excavation of an Egyptian tomb by the Smithsonian itself in Arizona. A lengthy front page story of the 
Phoenix Gazette on April the 5th, 1909, gave a highly detailed report of the discovery and excavation of a rock cut vault by an expedition led by Professor S.A. Jordan of the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian, however, claims to have absolutely no knowledge of the discovery or its discoverers. Well, that's a lie because two damn articles came out within a month's time of each other stating the facts. Where did they get these two stories from in Arizona, in the Arizona Gazette? And the Phoenix Gazette. Where, where, where did they get these stories from? Regardless, these are the articles here to the left. You can pull them up online and actually read the stories. Then we come to find out that Ramesses III, father of ancient America. Ramesses III is the father of ancient America. So those who have E1B1A, we are connected to Ramesses the Third. Ramesses the Third had E1B1A. And he was the pharaoh in the 20th dynastic period. Dr. Lean. Yes. That's the, that's the man, the man that was in South Carolina who had the same DNA. He was he was related to Ramses, wasn't he? He was what? That man in South Carolina who had the, his DNA matched that of the pharaohs. I think wasn't it Ramses he was related to? They said. Yeah, Ramses the third, same yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. But see, what people don't know is that Ramses the third is also the father of ancient America. Right. So we talking about the forefathers. We talking about. Oh, there was about Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and yes. Benjamin Franklin and my great grandfather. All, all that is, all, all that is, all that is after is the after effect. Right, <laughs> right. The real father of ancient America is Ramses the Third, and this is from a book that you can read by R. A. Gerard's boy, and this is what he says. The chief claim to fame of Ramesses III has been his conquest of the sea people, right, who are known as the Hittites. His temple walls at Medina Habu depicts the naval battle, the first such pictured monumentally. If Egypt had fallen, then to the combined Mediterranean power, the history might have been very different. But again, had he not set the expedition to the far west of the world, the transformation of Mesoamerica would have not come about or take the turn that it did. When stock is taken of the achievements of pharaohs, Ramesses III would have to be accorded the double distinction, one, savior of, of Egypt, and two, Father of Omec Mexico. So this is the father of the Omex. Is Ramesses the third? This is the same around the same time that we find seventeen hundred BC that we find Negroes in the Grand Canyon building temples and different other structures. This is no goddamn coincidence. This is during the same time period of Ramesses the Third. This is the same time period of the Omex civilization. And how the Omex civilization, the Shi people, were imprinted with the Kushite Egyptian people who came to the New World, as they refer to it as. So, 
This is how you are Egyptian today. And how you have Ramesses the third haplogroup E1B1A. God damn. And it just didn't come from Africa 400 years ago. America's first civilization, this is by Michael D. Cole. And he shows you the face of the Omex, which they tell you is Negroid. The Omex, the first great American civilization was that of the Omex of Mexico. From 1200 BC, they developed a highly organized society centered on spectacular sites built by religious ceremonies at San Lorenzo and Leventa and Tabasco. Omec people sculptured huge monuments in stone and purported in, um, figurines in jade. Many Omec achievements benefit later American societies, earning Omec's culture the name Mother Culture. So see, we call Africa the motherland, but we got to call the Omex the mother culture. The mother culture came by way of Ramesses III, the father of ancient America. So the father of ancient America, Ramesses III, and the Omex culture is the mother culture. So we got the mother and the father. The head look Negroid. It doesn't look mongoloid in no shape, form, or fashion. The Omex in African presence in early America this is a perspective by Paul A. Barton. He says, according to an archaeologist who recently participated in archaeological work in Mexico, one of the most ancient civilizations in the Americas, Black and Negrito Omex, developed a calendar that goes back to about 3,113 years before Christ. Now, if you take 3,113 years before Christ, which is B.C., and add 2000, 2000, um, 2024, what's the year in which that you get? Someone add that up. How many years is that? The archaeologists who appeared on the Art Bell show made that point. The ancient Omex of Mexico and Mesoamerica are one of the most intriguing civilizations of Americans. In fact, they are the first civilization in Mexico. Well, not the first, but at least moderately the oldest. It was from them that all other civilization in Mesoamerica followed. Yet the fact that the Omex were more likely a black civilization of Africans origin has not been made public, and the Indian element of Mexico have gained more prominence to the extent that the Negroes, substrata of the ancient Mexico and Mesoamerican civilization, have been kept hidden. At least it used to be. It is not now. But we got them we got them to confess when Barack Obama was in office. Yet over the many years, various levels of proof have been found linking the Omex to Africa in the western parts of Africa. Omex introduces the first aspect of Mesoamerican civilization. The black Omex were the first to build pyramids in Mexico, although they was built of mud. All right. And one were more cone shaped than actual pyramidal. The Omec appeared from Carvin's 22 colossal, colossal head, uh, or stone heads, dating back to 1100 BC. Also created thousands of works of art throughout Mesoamerica. Omec terracotta art 
shows people involved in a variety of activities from wrestling to pottery making. In retrospect, there is no doubt that the ancient Olmecs of Mexico and the Olmec language, religion, culture were of African origin and specifically of the Mendi group of West Africa, which um, Dr. Clyde Winters also states. Still, it is sad that the essays on the Olmecs are not presented in publication. When the African origin of this Mesoamerican civilization is presented, including the latest findings, there is hope, however, that the most recent findings of the ancient Olmec calendar and the similarities in race, culture, languages with Africans in West Africa will be brought out and made available to those who see an obvious African influence and presence in early America. So did the Omex build the first pyramids? The Omex was the first of the Mesoamerican to begin a tradition of building pyramids. One of their pyramids, the Great Pyramid in La Venta, is considered to be one of the earliest known pyramids. And you can put this right up on Google. Right up on the Google. All right. So here, ancient Indian civilizations? Okay, now what I'm saying, the Olmecs are Indians. What happened? They weren't just Africans. Now they're Indians. Why? Because they're Indo-Americans. Build the shit here in the Americans. They're no longer in Africa. I think that's a good answer. The Olmec Indians are often regarded as the mother culture of the late later Middle American civilization. The Omec Indians were a, see, the Omec Indians, were a culture of ancient people who lived about 1300 to 400 BC in the Eastern Mexican lower lands. Some researchers say that they descended from Asia. No. Others say they were from Africa. Somewhat. The Omec people called themselves she, pronounced she people. Remember? I told you that. The Olmec Indians ruled a territory that extended from the Tobla Mountains in the west of the lower lands of the Contropo in the east, a region which Pacific, Pacific, uh, Pacific, uh, excuse me, it's been a long day, a region with um, significant ver variations in geological and ecology. Over 170 Omec monuments have been found within the area, and 80% of those occur at the three largest um, Tino, uh, uh, Tidalan, Veracruz, or oh, excuse me, I'm tripping, La Venta, Tabasco, 38%, San Lorenzo, all right, um, uh, uh, Tilcan, Tidalan, Veracruz, 30%, and Laguna de las Cerros, Veracruz, 12%. So Tabasco, Levento, and San Lorenzo. These three major Omec centers are spaced from east to west across the dominant or domain, excuse me, so that each center could exploit, control, and provide a distinct set of natural resources viable to the overall Omec economy. La Venta, the eastern center, is near the rich um, estuaries of the coast and also could have provided coca, rubber, and salt. San Lorenzo, at the center of the Omec domain, controlled the vast flood plain area of um, Cosa Coco Basin and River Lane, River Line trade routes. Laguna de los um, Cerro, adjacent to um, the Tuxland, Tuxla Mountains, is positioned near important sources of Basset, Basset, a stone near needed to Manufacture manos, matatis, and monuments. Perhaps marriage alignments between Olmec centers help maintain such 
and exchange networks. The great Omex Center that soon developed at La Venta, San Lorenzo, and Laguna de la Cerro, and the smaller centers such as Tres Soporte were not simple, simply vacant religious sites, but dynamic settlements that included artesian and farmers, as well as religious specialists and, root, and the rulers. The OMEC um, architecture at St. Lorenz, for example, includes both public ceremonial buildings, elite residents, and the House of Commoners. OMEC public ceremonial buildings were more typically earthen platform mounds, some of which had larger house structures built upon them. At Levento, we can see that after 900 BC, such platform mounds were arranged around large plaza areas and include a new type of agriculture, a tall round or pyramid round, mound, excuse me, a tall pyramid mound. So this is how the, the Great Pyramid at Leventa, Tabasco looks. This is a mound. So the Omex are not just the pyramid builders, but they are the mound builders as well. So here in North America, being that we are the descendants of the Omex, the Washita, who are of the Shi people, we are the descendants, and we are labeled today as the mound builders, according to the Empress Return of the Ancient Ones. All right, get this book by Zachariah Ascension, The Omec Enigma. Why is it such an enigma that Negroes were seeing the Americans? It's an enigma because the Europeans say that it is. This is from the Lost Realms, book number four of the Earth Chronicles. Read of many books, of my books, especially the Lost Realms, as well as the previous article on this website titled The Case of the Missing Elephant, known by now the beginnings with the discovery of the colossal head, stone heads in 1869 in advanced civilization that preceded the Mayans, that preceded the Mayans, that preceded the Mayans and Aztecs of Mexico came to light. It leaders and bearers were unmistakably black Africans. They were arbitrarily named by archaeologist Omex. So they was named by the archaeologist Omex, the rubber people. That was not their name. They referred to themselves as the Shi people, as we still refer to ourselves as the Shi people today, Washita, and their embarrassing enigma of who they are or who they were and how they were come across the ocean, allegedly, and why was compound by the timing of their arrival in the New World. Once it was concealed, um, con conceded very grudgingly, that the Omex did indeed represent the earliest or even mother culture of Mesoamerica. The date of their arrival was at first set at 250 BC, then at about another 500 BC. They're back, further back and back until 1500 BC was a knowledge. But I argue for a date twice as old. Exactly. And he's right, because the calendar dates back to 3,113 years ago. Uh, excuse me, not years ago, but B.C. Anyone add up 3,113 years plus 2024? What you get? Okay. 5137. 5137, so 5,137 years ago. 
is when the Omex, or at least when they started saying that the Omex put together this calendar known now as the Mayan calendar. It's not the Mayan calendar. It's the Omex calendar. The Mayans, as we already seen, they preceded the Mayans. We, we just read that, didn't we? Didn't we just read that? I think we did. Right here, an advanced civilization that preceded the Mayan and the Aztec of Mexico. Preceded. So this is before them. So how in the hell can the calendar of the Omex, of the Maya, how, how the hell can the calendar of the Omex be contributed to the Mayan calendar, which they all kept calling it? And that's, and that's the reason why, number one, they got the shit wrong about um, December the 21st, 2012 A.D. <laughs> they was calling this shit the wrong thing to begin with. Uh, awesome. Yep, it was. Just corrected by the Omex. Yeah. So here, a God and his secret number. My conclusion that the Omex presence in the New World went back as far as 5,000 years to circle it around 3,000 B.C. Who reached by my path, the first one was to attempt to identify the great god of Mesoamerica, the winged serpent, Quasicoto, for the Aztecs, Kuku Khan for the Mayan, Quasicoto, Gudumas, for the Toltec and the Incas, and the significance of his present or, or per promise to return to the land on the first day of a 52 year cycle. We won't read that last part because this is a lie to begin with. 1519, when the Aztec god Montezuma believed that the appearance of the Spanish conquistador Cortez was such a return. Of course, I would anticipate a sacred date. No, it doesn't. <sighs> It was not the Spanish conquistador Cortez. Because the Europeans tried to make it as if it was a white man. It was not. The Black Washita of the Louisiana Territories. The Black Washita of Louisiana was documented by the French and the Spanish to be one of the black nations who existed in the Mississippi Valley and southern Midwestern United States before the Louisiana Purchase of 1803 through 1805, in which France sold the land without their consent. The book History of the African Omex details the feelings of the descendants of the black Washita nation who still lives in the southern United States to this very day. And yes, we do. In retrospect, the black the book, a history of the African black um, Omex, black civilization of Americas from prehistoric times to the present era, is a treasure to behold. Anyone who is confused about the history of the United States and the entire Americas before Columbus should read this fascinating book with a large number of references and and writing in a very professional style. The book, a history of the African Omex. Published by Paul Barton, First Books Library, Bloomington, Indiana, United States, examines the contributions of old world people to the Americas, such as Africans, Chinese, Europeans, Middle Easterners, Africoid, Malaysians, Africoid, Australians, Japanese, Polynesians, and others. It provides the once hidden facts about the great contribution made by Africans to develop the culture of the Americas thousands of years before Columbus. Thousands of years before the slave, before the so-called transatlantic slave trade. Get this book: What They Never Told You in History Class by Indo Kemet Kush. He tells you the first Americans were black. I read this when I was 12, 13 years old. 
and always kept a copy of this book on deck. You need this book in your library. You don't got it, you tripping. This book is 40 years old. You definitely should have heard about this book. I got it, God. So it rhymes. That's what I'm talking about. Get it! Version of it. All right. So it's right here. The scholarly Latin author C.C. McQuees explains the strong possibility that black people were the first people in the Americas, out of which later came the red race. So the Indians came later. They weren't the first. So stop lying to the people. When all now, when, when archaeologists, anthropologists, paleontologists, Geologists, they're all saying the same thing now. They all got to tell the goddamn truth. You think this is just a coincidence? Or is this coinciding with the fact that now we know who we are and they got to tell the goddamn truth about it? Prophet Nubadrali said he would make the European tell the truth. Notice that? The black gods of ancient America. Yeah, definitely done that. Definitely done oh, yeah. that. Yes, yeah. The black gods of ancient America. Here we are. Another of the five gigantic heads of Omec deity weighed about five tons for the full-size replication in the American Museum of Natural History in New York. The black began his career in America, not as slave, but as master. Get this book, The History of the African Omex, which I have a copy of by Paul Alfred Barton. If you don't get this, get it. These are books that you should already have in your library. Because this is not the first time of doing this presentation. The carvings of the giant stone heads is also an African tradition practiced in ancient times as well as to this very day. This tradition was practiced throughout Nubia, Egypt, Kush, and West Africa. In fact, this is an African invention. The traditions of carving giant heads of important people is one of the most important aspects of the African carving tradition. The heads of kings and other important officials carved during the Nubia, Nubian military and political influence and control of Egypt. So where they just Nubians? No, they was Nubian Egyptian and can be seen at the Nubian um, capital of Tanis in Lower Egypt. Here's the ancient Egyptians with helmets on prior to the Omec or the Shi people. Same helmet. The sculpture created by the Omex is located in the Museum of Anthropology at um, Xilapa, Veracruz. The sculpture represents the first use of Atlantes in Mesoamerica. Now, these, this look exactly like this, doesn't it? Unmistakable, Doc. Huh? It's unmistakable. Right, it's unmistakable. However, it differs from the Atlantean figures of Tula because it is not in the round and is instead a relief on the table. The Omec head, the Egyptian helmet. The Egyptians wore a type of helmet as well. Notice the similarities with the helmet, the emblems on the front and the earplugs. Comparison between the Omec head and the face of the Great Sphinx.
the giant Arabian carved monument directly in the rock in many places throughout Arabia. Here we see a rock carved monument which looks like the Omec head. The feature shows beyond a shadow of the doubt that he was one of our ancestors. This was built by the ancient Kushites of Arabia, who built many monolithic um, structures throughout Arabia. It is beginning to become clear that the Kush that begat Nimrod was a Kush that located in Arabia and in India as well. Ambiguous amongst the Omecs are Afroquoid types. Nowhere but in Egypt at the time was Levantines and black African intermingling. Who are the Levantines? The Levantines are the Semites, or Shemites as I refer to them as. They came from the line of Shem. It was the so-called black people. They, these was the um, Hebrews or the Israelites. And they mixed with the black Afrikoi uh, people or black African intermingling. That's what they had. The colossal Omec heads clearly represent Africans. This is one of one over a dozen so far excavated. In fact, about 22 has been excavated. This is one. All of, excuse me, all of them have broad nose, thick, um, thick and fleshly lips, quite unlike the native Indians. Examination of Omex skulls. All right, by a Polish anthropologist, have independently de detected a strong Afrikoid element. You, you you had to, you really had to do an independent uh, study in order to find that out? Hell, you can look at them and see. Proof that they are not just African, um, that proof that they are not just African, but blacks from Egypt is that nowhere else at the time were Egyptian heads. It says, Ramesses, Nubian heads from Tanis, which were the point, All right, there we go. The resemblance extends to, uh, excuse me, which was the point from which expeditions were sent on the Mediterranean. The resemblance extends to the incised parallel lines of the leather helmet. The other undoubtedly stamps of Egypt is that nowhere else at the time was colossal sculptures being carved and transported miles from their quarries. Here they were brought 50 miles through some of them weighed as much as 40 tons. The powerful portraits testify that they were, that they were people, persons in authority, excuse me. The technique of monument, m monumental stone coffins did not exist in Mexico before the, o the Omec advance. He said, I now think some among the Nubian crew may have been ship captains. The leader of the Shepshut Punt expedition was called Nahasi. Nahasi is Nagas, <laughs> the Nubian. We now also we know also that on Ramesses the third put expedition were ship captains, inspectors, and petty officers. To conclude with the aid of text and comparative evidence from both sides, I have been able to surmise who were some of the people that took the part in the great voyage to the West. It says they included Egyptian priests, Nubians, and Levantines. The Levantines is where you have your E1B1A from. This is where you have your E1B1A from. So Hamites and Shemites came here to the Americans. And the dominant haplogroup amongst so-called blacks today in the Americas is E1B1A. Do y'all know that? 
Awesome. I think you told me that before, though. I'm not sure. Yeah. The Great Civilization of the Ancient World, the Omex. Get the book, the Omex, America's First Civilization. Get the book, African Presence in Ancient America. They came before Columbus by Dr. Ivan von Sonoma, who I knew personally, met several times at Federal State University in the early um, 90s, well, late 80s, early 90s. The African Presence in America before Columbus. Floyd W. Hayes the third. Good, good. So the obscure mound builders. How how is it that is obscure? Mound builders were indigenous blacks of North America, ancestors of America's Washita Empire. Yes, of the Olmec Empire, the She People Empire. Yes, we were, and yes, we are. Omeg hey, 1500 to 1000 BC. Notice that the dates of these heads correspond exactly with the dates of the destruction of Atlantis, 1500 BC. Omeg stone has, from approximately 1500 to 100 BC, 1000 BC, the fact that the Omeg civilization seemed to appear already formed and intact suggests that they themselves may have been of those who were dislocated after the cataclysm. They were perhaps migrants from one part of a Mexico which is Atlantis, to another part of Mexico. The Olmec stone heads dating from practically 1500 to 1000 BC. These are the proud and mighty features of the rulers who were in full control of their dominions. These heads were caused of single pieces of basalt weighing up to 60, 60 tons. Notice the small Skullcap War. These are connections with the Kushite rulers of Egypt. Most archaeologists try to come up with all kinds of ways to try to prove that they are not representations of African type people. All right? And all of this information right now that I'm reading comes from um, Brother Hakeem Beck. Here are the Omex or braids, therefore disproving if they are Indians and disproving that they are any other race. This head, look at this head. You can see the hair. Tightly curl. This head dates back to approximately 1500, 1500 BC to 1000 BC also. The foundation of the archaeology and related sciences, as we know, it presently were laid out in the mid 1800s. This was during the time when the Europeans were perfecting their worldwide white supremacist paradigm. And also the mud flood, the Great Reset. The scholars in various fields during this time took the position, often under professional pressure, that anything in their respective fields that contradict the emerging white supremacist paradigm was to be either suppressed or destroyed. Everybody understand that? Also, any scholar contradicting this paradigm were discredited and or had their career destroyed. Could this be any uh, other? Coercion, coercion. Of course. Okay. 
these are obvious pictures of our ancestry. You can't bypass this. See, that one look like, um, remind me of, um, I think, what's his name? Patrick Ewing. That's what it looked like. Okay. All right. But these are obvious pictures, portraits, or I should say sculptures, I should say, sculptures. Here is a brother with locks, braids. Afro-Americans in pre-Columbian Mexico. It says right here, no information was given on these hands, but they are clearly of Negroid black race. Numerous other portraits of Negroid people in Mesoamerica can be found in two books. Alexander von Wootenau, The Art of Terracotta Pottery in Pre-Columbian Central and South America. Wootenau has been criticized by numerous anti-diffusionists in the past. Many of his photogra uh, photographs are of sculptures from private collections and cannot be authenticated. <laughs> However, his later published contains black and white photos of sculptures. One sculpture in color at the Jalapa Museum. Here's Omec here to the left, and here's Martin Luther the King to the right. This is Jesus here to the left, and we took about 20 of us down to Mexico back in March 20, uh, 22nd, 2013. So 11 years ago, we went down to Cancun and went to Tulum. We went to Chesanisa, went to Cabal, to these pyramid sites. And Jesus was our tour guide. He was an anthropologist, archaeologist, I should say. And if you can't see, um, this is Brother Azariah and Majade there in the back of the photo that is with us, alay salam upon Brother Azariah. All right. And then we come down to even before the so-called slave trade, Negroes were still coming to the Americas. And this is according to Dr. Clyde Winters. PhD, he states, in 1300s, which is 1311 through 1313, many Malians sailed to the Americas, although most Malians settled in Brazil, Mexico, and built the mounds along the Mississippi River. Some Malians settled in Florida. Okay. So I'm going to end class here. Notice that this was almost 200 years before the so-called slave trade. So I broke down how we was already in America from 600 million years to 200 years before the so-called slave trade. And Negroes still just want to say that we are just slaves. We just came here 400 million. We just came here 400 years ago. Tripping. It's idiotic. And anyone who's still saying that yeah. nowadays is a fucking idiot. Before this information out now. And we gave you the latest and the greatest information on proof. This is proof. Not just Tremendous. talk. Man. Not just talking. This is proof. 
Okay? So I'm going to say I take wash to each to everyone. I have to wash to each to one. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what.